Welcome to Unwired Learning. In this video, we're going to talk about series and parallel capacitors and inductors. Our goal for this video is to be able to calculate the equivalent capacitance or inductance of a capacitor or inductor circuit, uh, which has a combination of these items. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to break this up into all four parts. We're going to first look at parallel capacitors, then series capacitors, then series inductors, and then finally, parallel inductors. So let's start with parallel capacitors. In this case, you can see that I have a circuit where I am driving a set of parallel capacitors in number of capacitors. See here, I've got the dots to indicate that I have a continuation of any number of capacitors in parallel. I'm driving that circuit with a current whose value is I. And because these are all in parallel, I know that this current that's coming in, this I, is going to be split into n number of parts. We're dividing the current amongst each of the capacitors. This naturally leads us to the way that we're going to determine the equivalent capacitance of a set of parallel capacitors. In fact, all we're going to do is we're going to apply Kirchhoff's current law to this situation. Kirchhoff's current law says that all of the currents entering the node must be equal to all the currents leaving the node. And since all of these capacitors are in parallel, the node right up here at the top of this circuit is all the same node. So then I can write that the current I equals I1 plus I2 plus dot 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 plus I sub n. And we know uh, that our current voltage relationship for a capacitor is I equals C dV dt. That means for the nth capacitor, the first one, the second one, the nth one, and the so on and so forth, all I have to do is write this out. So I can say that I equals C1 dV dt plus C2 dV dt plus dot 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 plus Cn dV dt. And since we're dealing with one continuous node for all of these parallel capacitors, the voltage is exactly the same for all of them. So the derivative of the voltage with respect to time will also be the same for all of them. Therefore, I can distribute out that particular quantity. And I am left with C1 plus C2 plus dot 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 Cn times dV dt. And here you can see that what's inside of the parentheses here is the equivalent capacitance. So in fact, capacitors in parallel simply add up so we can write this generically as the sum from n equals 1 to capital N of C sub n is the equivalent capacitance for a parallel combination of capacitors. Now, this is what the math tells us. Let's look at an analogy just to make sure that we agree with this assessment. Of course we should because that's what the math says, but uh, I think there's a more practical way of looking at this. If we consider that a capacitor is kind of like a bucket of water in the analogy between electrical current and water, then we can say, well, if I have a bunch of buckets in parallel and I all hook them up to the same manifold of water and I put spouts amongst the top of each one of these buckets, then I think it's obvious to say that, um, yes, in fact, the total capacity of all of the buckets simply adds up. And in the same way, parallel capacitors, the total capacitance of the parallel combination will be the addition of all of the capacitances. Now let's take a look at the idea of a series set of capacitors. In this case, what I have done is I have drawn the circuit such that I have a voltage source whose value is V, driving each one of these capacitors that are in series. And you can see, like the other circuit, I have C1, C2, dot, 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 plus Cn number of capacitors in series in this circuit. Now, I've chosen to drive this with a voltage source simply for the reason that when I drive this with a voltage source, the current through this series set of capacitances will be the same and each one of the capacitors will have an equivalent voltage drop across each one of them. So for the first capacitor, I can say its voltage drop is V1, and the second one, V2, and the nth one is Vn. Now, since I have a single continuous loop here in this circuit, 
I can use Kirchhoff's voltage law to define the relationship between the value V of the supply and all of the drops. And what that says is that the total voltage drop across each one of these capacitors must equal the total voltage being supplied by that voltage source. So mathematically, what I can say is that V must equal V1 plus V2 plus dot 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 plus Vn. Now, in the case of a capacitor, the voltage current relationship is a little bit more complex than our previous equation in that it is Vn of t equals 1 over c times the integral from uh, an initial time to some ending time of current with respect to dt plus an initial voltage V of t naught. Now all I have to do is I have to, have to substitute this equation for each of the voltages in my previous relationship where all the voltages add up from the Kirchhoff's voltage law application. And this is a little bit complex, but I think you can see that what's going to happen is, since all of the currents are the same, the portion of this where I'm taking the integral of current is going to be the same for all of the circuits. Now my initial conditions will be different for each one of the capacitors, but I can split this up into a slightly more manageable situation. What I can say is that one over C1 plus one over C2 plus dot 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 1 over C capital N times that integral of I dt plus all of the sums of the initial voltages is equal to my supply voltage. And now you can see how the series combination of capacitors is playing out. Here the front portion of this final equation here is 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus dot 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 1 over C n. And that combination is giving us clues about our equivalent series capacitance. In fact, what it is saying is that 1 over our C equivalent must equal the sum of 1 over each of the capacitances. And now that gives us our final relationship for our series capacitors. Now let's turn our attention to series and parallel inductors. In this case, we're going to start with series inductors, and then we're going to move our attention to parallel inductors. The math for these two cases is very similar to the math for that of the capacitors, but in a way it's the exact opposite. To give you a little hint, series inductors add and parallel inductors sum as one over the inductance. That's the exact opposite that we just found with the capacitors. But we should do the math to find out why. For the case of the series inductors, Let's take a look at the fact that we have a single continuous loop and, you know, the same current through each one of these. We'll call that current I. And for each one of these inductors, we're going to have a voltage drop across each one. So for L1, we're going to have a voltage drop V1. For L2, we're going to have a voltage drop V2. And for Ln, we're going to have a voltage drop Vn. And what we can do here is we can do a Kirchhoff's voltage law loop equation for these combination of inductors. And what that says is, like before, that the voltage V must equal to the sum of all of these individual voltages for each of these inductors, V1 plus V2 plus dot 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 plus Vn. And we know that the voltage across an inductor is given by the equation L di dt. So we can write for each of these voltages, we can write L1 di dt plus L2 di dt plus dot 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 L sub n di dt. And here you can see that the di dt is the same for each one of these terms. And if we distribute that out, what we're going to find is that we have L1 plus L2 plus dot 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 plus Ln quantity times di dt. And here you can see how the series combination of inductors plays out. It plays out just like the parallel combination of capacitors where the inductance values simply add up. So we can write that the equivalent inductance, L equivalent, equals the sum from I equals 1 to N of L sub N. And that gives us our equivalent inductance for a series combination of inductors. Now let's turn our attention to inductors in parallel. We may recognize that this is almost exactly the same kind of math that we had to do for series capacitors. We know that the equation for the current through an inductor related to the voltage is 1 over L times the integral of the voltage dt plus the initial current. 
And so without having to do all of that math, I think it's easy to see that the parallel combination of inductors is going to be the sum of one over each inductance value. So we can write that one over L equivalent equals the sum from N equals one to capital N of one over L sub N. And that gives us our parallel combination equivalent for the inductors. In summary, what we have is we have a set of four relationships. We have our relationship for parallel capacitors. That is that the equivalent capacitance is the sum of all of the capacitors that are in parallel. We have our series capacitors, which says that the equivalent capacitance, or one over the equivalent capacitance, is the sum of one over each one of the capacitances. And similarly, for our parallel inductors, we have one over the equivalent inductor is equal to the sum of the parallel combination. And our series inductance equivalent is the sum of all of the inductances. And with this information, we should be able to simplify any combination of parallel and series capacitors or inductor circuits. And with that summary, this concludes our video of unwired learning.